If you've come to this video from YouTube and haven't read the text, you should probably read the text. This app is all about finding the lines that cross in the right place. When you first open the app, you have a 75 mile search radius that's centered on Denver. Also, you have all the features that are in Colorado. If you have a large search radius, you'll still only get features from Colorado. And when I say features, I'm talking about USGS features. What I've not included are man-made structures and things that don't make sense like streams and trails that don't have a specific point. So this improves your search feature focus to the ones that you really want to look at. If you find the app useful, you can go into the preferences button right here. Since I have it in horizontal mode, you'll have to scroll up and then you can unlock all four states. And when you unlock all four states, you also get Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Utah, Nevada, and Arizona. That is in case your search radius goes beyond one of the borders of your search area. Now let's go over the preferences. This is the default when you first open it. It's got a 100 mile radius for a search area. When you put your pen down on your special spot, it will search for every feature within a 100 mile radius. Also, it'll have a 75 foot aperture. What this means is to include a pair of feature points in your spreadsheet, it must pass within 75 feet of your pen. Also, you can lock one of the feature points down, called an anchor point here, by its name, or you can type in a latitude and longitude and lock that anchor point and see every anchor point that corresponds to that locked point. In a little bit, I'll show you the output of this app, which is a spreadsheet and also visualization inside the app of these points. So you'll see what is going on, what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go back. Also, besides not including man-made features, touch down here in this corner. This is the default configuration when you first open it. You can exclude specific things, and we all know Forrest hates craters, so I'll turn that off. Just kidding, Forrest. And if you want to include a feature that doesn't exist, like your special home of brown, you can add that feature. First, you'll need to navigate to your spot where you want the new feature. There's two ways to move this pen. You can touch down and let up real quickly, and that will move the pen instantly. Or you can touch down on the pen for a third of a second, then start moving it. It's best to touch down near the bottom of the pen so you can see where you're navigating to. And then you can make minor adjustments by touching down on the pen, wait a third of a second, and move it around. Let's say this put in right here is your home brown spot. And just hit this plus button up on top. Type in your new feature name. Make sure it's unique. Make sure all your feature names are unique so you can find them easily on your spreadsheets. And to finish, touch this add button. It puts a new feature point right at the spot where you had your pen. Now also you can edit your added points by touching the plus sign again. Hit the edit button. You can see them there. Touch on it. Change the name. Or you can also delete that way. Let's go back. Cancel. So you can see your features fairly easily by just zooming out and seeing it. Now let's move our main pen to a spot that we want to investigate, our special charger spot. Also, when you touch down on the pen, just wait a third of a second before moving so you don't move the whole map around like that. Just touch down, wait, and then you can move it. Let's say we put it underneath this snowbank. <laughs> let's, let's say you put it underneath this glacier. Right. Oh, let's investigate right here. It's an Otzi treasure find. I have no idea whether that's above 10,000 feet or not. Let's go ahead and do that one. Now, there's two things you can do. You can touch this bottom button right here, and it will give you just a spreadsheet of your radius and everything that you have turned on. So you can turn everything off here except for, say, ridges, and it will show you every ridge within a 100 mile radius of your pen. Or you touch this top button here and it will give you a spreadsheet of 
every pair of anchor points that goes through your pin within your aperture radius, so 75 feet. Here are the defaults again. I used to have these limits a little bit higher, and when I had the limits a little bit higher, and I maxed out these limits to 375 miles and then a 400 foot aperture, it took an hour to process. And it listed out 300,000 anchor pairs. So you want to consider your radius when you're doing this search. The aperture, if you have a specific spot, you can close that down pretty far. You can't go below five feet, I believe I have set for minimum, but you can close it down pretty far and see what anchor points go through that. But if you're investigating, you know, a general area, you can set it to 200 feet. You'll get a whole bunch of anchor points, but you can see which two or three go through specific spots and which makes sense. Okay, let's do this one. So we're going to touch this top button here. And it's going to process, and since I have normal default settings, it'll only take a few seconds. When it's ready, it will put a file into your Files app on your device and in your iCloud account, so you can access it from a Mac or PC, PC through the internet, but on your Mac, right here. It will be in your iCloud Drive folder, which you can find here. Underneath your iCloud Drive folder, it'll have a new folder called Fin Treasure X Tools, and there it is. I'm going to double click to unzip it and open it. And there's your anchor point pairs. On a Mac, it'll open in numbers. And numbers is limited to 65,000 rows. You can easily produce a 200,000 to 300,000 row table. So either you'll have to open it up in a text editor and split it up, or you can get Open Office, which will open a million rows. The way this is organized is the first anchor point and the second anchor point, plus the latitude and longitude. You can easily copy the latitude and longitude into Google Maps because it's formatted so you can just copy and paste. It's got the radius and it's organized by ascending radiuses so all the way up to in this case 100 miles on this column. In this column it just shows you the number of feet from the pin that the anchor points go through. Let's start looking for stuff. So let's filter on both anchor points. Let's do first we all know searchers love falls so let's put that in also on anchor point two the same thing in let's put in gold because we know Ben likes gold let's do some conditional highlighting also let's make falls blue and let's make gold yellow and let's look for our home of brown also and we'll make that green since I have conditional highlighting, let's go back and add a new row for my HOB. So let's look through what we have here. And this looks interesting. Big Falls, Big Creek Falls and Mount Princeton Hot Springs. I know searchers love Mount Princeton Hot Springs, so let's highlight that. Should we make that color? Let's make that red, of course. Now let's visualize this in the app also. And let's visualize this one also, Gold Blossom Rocks and Gold Hill. Anything else? And anything with HOB. Because we love our HOB, we need to see this. Oh, look at this, HOB with a blaze. Ooh. All right, so let's go back to the app. Okay, after you've run a spreadsheet, the top button only, you'll get a new button, this pencil button down here. You won't get this pencil button if you have a spreadsheet that's over 10,000 rows. Just because if you do have a spreadsheet that's over 10,000 rows, you probably want to look at the spreadsheet and get it pared down and do your visualization in Google Maps instead. Okay, let's look for Big Creek first. There it is, touch on it to highlight it. Now let's go look for our Homes of Browns. I like those two. Also the Gold Hill. Let's do that one. There it is. All right, just close up the spreadsheet. And there's the visualization. Two of the points are going through the Homer Brown. So obviously they're, see the two lines that are very parallel. 
going through our point and the home ground. That is how the app is visualizing where the lines cross in the right spot. And the big advantage of the app is reading through your spreadsheets, thinking the right thoughts about the names as you scan through your spreadsheets. And in case you haven't noticed, that could be interpreted as the blaze and why Finn would be so coy about the blaze. He did say that it was a physical thing, but he was responding to someone asking whether it was smoke and mirrors or metaphysical, metaphorical. And that's why I believe he said it's a physical thing as opposed to metaphysical and as opposed to a physical object. But it's up to your interpretation. Might be the blaze, might not be. And that is the app.